Welcome back to Little Bang Discovery Plus. Last session we learnt all about physical change and solids, liquids and gases. If you haven't had a chance to have a little science fair with your adult, talk about what you know now, what ideas might have changed, have a little chat before we start on our new topic, which is always there air and recording results. Okay, we're going to start with, what do you think you know about air? So, can you see it? Is it everywhere? Uh, what is it made up of? Does it take up space? Is it thicker in some spots and thinner in other spots? So there are some questions to think about. Do you know the answers yet? Would you like to have a guess at them? Grown-ups, you might like to write down some of the things that the children think they know. You might have different ideas. Now, our first experiment is that air can push on us. Now, this room is full of air and I don't normally notice it because it's been with me my whole life and it's what I'm used to. But air actually pushes on us all the time. We can have a look at how that happens if we use a piece of paper and we try sticking it on our tummies and it falls off. But if you use a piece of paper and go for a little run around the room and let go of the piece of paper while you're running, you might find that the air that you're running into actually pushes the, on the paper and it sticks to you while you're running. When you stop running, once again, it will fall down. But while you're running, you might find that you can let go of the paper and it will stick there. But you can try it. Hold the paper, start running, let it go. And does it actually stick to you until you stop running? Make sure you've got a nice clear space to run in. You might even like to go outside to try it. If it's a really windy day though, you might find the moving air outside makes a difference to your experiment results. Now, the next activity is we're going to have a look at how we use air. So I would like you all to stand there or sit there, feel your tummies and just sit there for a minute. And what's happening? Can you feel or feel the bottom of your ribs? Can you feel them moving? And the reason that they're moving is because we breathe air. We need air to do, for our body to do all the things it needs to do. And our lungs and our ribs move for that air to get into our bodies. So we breathe air. Now we're going to actually feel, you can try feeling that. If you blow out on your hand, can you feel the air going out? When you breathe in, you can't really feel the air going in on your hand, but when you breathe out, you can feel it. Now, if you've got a straw and a Ziploc bag, if you try closing the Ziploc nearly all the way, except for the very edge, and then if you close your Ziploc, around the straw. What do you think will happen if you blow out through the straw? What do you think will happen inside the Ziploc bag? Have a guess, make a prediction with your grown-up. What's going to happen when you blow out through the straw? You might like to draw a picture of this before you try it in your discovery diary. Because remember today we're recording results particularly. So this is the before diagram before you try blowing out through the straw. So if you'd like to draw your bag that's got the straw in it ready for the experiment, then stop the video and make your quick drawing. Now let's try actually blowing through our straw and see what happens. So our, my bag blew up and I could actually feel, because the straw is, there's a little hole in the top of the zip 
where the straw goes in. And while I'm blowing in, I can actually feel the air coming out through that little hole as I blow in. So the air that I breathe out is inflating my Ziploc bag. Now, I don't know if you can see, but my Ziploc bag has actually gone a bit foggy as well. Because in my breath, there is water as a gas, so water vapour, and it's made a little cloud inside the bag. So a cloud is when the water vapour that's in the air cools down, hits something cooler, and the bag's a bit cooler than my breath, and condenses into water. So that's what clouds are made of. So you might have also made a cloud inside your bag. Now, do you think if you breathed in through the straw, the air would come out of the bag? Make a prediction, have a guess with your grown-up. What will happen as you breathe in through the straw? Will the Ziploc bag deflate? Before you try it, you might like to draw a picture of your inflated Ziploc bag, which shows your results of blowing out through the straw into the bag. So if you'd like to do that, stop the video and make a recording of what your results are. Now, if you're ready to try the experiment of sucking the air out of the Ziploc bag, let's try it. I succeeded in getting most of the air out. Not all of it though. It's really hard to get all of the air out. I'm gonna try again. And can you see this corner of my bag? It looks like it's going down again. So as soon as I stop sucking, air is going back in and making the bag go up. So air likes to fill up spaces. It's really hard to have no air anywhere. If it can get in, it will. Okay, now our next experiment. Oh, if you would like to make a drawing of your sucked out Ziploc bag. So there's, there's a bit of a difference between how it was when I finished sucking and then the air does get back in. So you could make a drawing of that if you would like to in your discovery diary. Now our next experiment, me, you need a cup. Um, a, a colourless transparent one is good to help you see what's going on. Or it could be a glass. And you need some water in it. Fill it about two thirds full. And you need another really small little glass or egg cup. I've got a little shot glass, a plastic one that you can buy in the supermarket. You get about 20 in a packet. So I've got a little shot glass. And I want you to tell your grown up at the moment, do you think my shot glass is empty? So it looks like there's not much in there. Is it in fact empty? Talk to your grown-up, what do you think? Is it empty? Now that you've decided whether it's empty or not, let's do our experiment. We're going to turn our shot glass upside down and put it into our cup of water. So if it's empty, when we put it into the cup of water, what will happen? What do you think will happen? Do you think it will fill up with water when we put it in? Let's try it. I put it in and I don't know if you can see this, but it's not filling up with water. It's quite dry inside. It didn't fill up with water. So what was inside my cup? It wasn't empty at all. It was full of air. Now let's try that one more time. Put it, put it in so that it stays you can put it right down to the bottom if you like, and it won't fill up with water. But this time, I'm going to put it in 
and I'm going to tip it slightly. What do you think might happen if I do that? Talk to your grown-up, make a prediction. If I put it in full of air, but tip it on the side, what will happen? Let's try it. I put it in, I tip it on the side. Oh. Can you see those bubbles? The air is bubbling out and now it is full of water. So when I let the air escape by tipping my shot glass, then the water can get in. Try that again. And the bubbles come out and that means that the water can get in. Now, the next experiment, I'm going to use a new shot glass that's dry. This time, I'm going to use a little piece of blue tack, which I thought I had got out, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Here's a new piece of blue, blue tack that I'm going to stick inside on the bottom of the cup, the shot glass. And then I'm going to stick a little bit of paper to the blue tack. So I've got paper inside my shot glass stuck there so that it won't fall out with blue tack. Now I'm going to submerge my shot glass into the water again without tipping it so that it goes straight down. Do you think the paper will get wet? Talk to your grown-up, make a prediction. Is the paper going to get wet or is the paper going to stay dry? Okay, now that you've had a chance to do that, let's try it. Down we go, right down to the bottom. I bring it back up. What's my paper going to be? Is it going to be wet? No, it stayed dry. So the air that didn't escape meant that the paper stayed dry. What do you think will happen if I put it in, but I tip it? What will happen to the paper then? Tell your grown up what you think will happen. Let's try it. Put it in, tip it. The air's coming out, so what's going in? And this time, my paper is wet. So the air, when I didn't let the shot glass tip, kept the paper dry. But when I did let it tip and the water could get in, then it got wet. Now, our next experiment is using a balloon. So when you blow up a balloon, what does it get full of? Tell your grown-up, what will your balloon be full of when you blow it up? At the moment, it's not completely squished flat. The air, there's a little bit of air inside there. When I force more air in, it will blow up. Now I'm going to use a balloon pump, but you can just use your breath. You might need your grown-up to do this because sometimes balloons are quite stiff and hard to blow up. Now what's going to happen if I hold it closed but I don't tie off the end, what's going to happen to my balloon when I let it go? You might have seen this before. You might already know. Talk to your grown-up. What will happen when I let my balloon go? Okay, let's try it. Ready, set. <laughs> the air came shooting out the other end and it ended up way over here. So the balloon wanted to go back to not being stretched, pushed the air out and it came out the opening and because, why do you think the balloon went all over the place? 
Why didn't it just fly straight? Have a guess. What? Tell your grown-up. Why do you think the balloon goes all wobbly when you let it go and it flies off? So the reason is, the reason that the balloon goes wobbly is that this opening is wobbly. So when the air is coming out, this opening can wobble all over the place, which means the flight of the balloon wobbles as well. Now, this is how rockets work. They push gases out of the base of them, and but they go straight because rockets aren't made of wobbly rubber. They're made of very solid metals uh, and they've got fins on them to help them balance, so they go straight. But there is a way we can get our balloon to go straight. So let's pump it up again. And this time I'm going to put a closure on the end because I need to put the balloon down without it flying around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a string line for the balloon to fly on. So I'm going to thread a straw with the string. Now this is a nice thick shape type straw, so it's a nice wide one, which makes it easy to thread. And then I'm going to ask my colleague Adam to come and hold the string for me. So Adam's gonna go over there and hold the string. I'm gonna be over here and I'm going to stick the balloon to the straw and then we'll hold it like this and I'll let I'll just take the closure off and hold it put that down there now what do you think is going to happen when I let go of the balloon this time do you think it's going to wobble all over the place or do you think it might do something else? Tell your grown-up. All right, here we go. Ready, set. <laughs> so it did go, thank you, Adam. It did go along, along the straw with a few spins on the way. It was trying to wobble, but it mostly went straight. Now, we're going to try that one more time, but this time, I'm going to stick it on a different way. Oh, that balloon got a, got a hole in it that time. So we'll have to use a new balloon. I think the taking the sticky, okay, pump up our balloon. Put on my balloon closure again. Thank you, Adam. Could you help me again, please? Now this time, instead of last time I stuck the balloon on this way, this time I'm going to stick the balloon on this way. So do you think the same thing is going to happen or do you think something else might happen? Talk to your grown up. What do you think might happen? So this time we've got our balloon going. Oh, I haven't done that very straight. Oops. That's better. Okay, so I'll take off the balloon closure. Try not to let it go yet. Okay, here we go. Have you made a guess about what you think the balloon will do? Three, two, one, lift off. <laughs> Is that what you thought was going to happen? <laughs> Thanks, Adam. So it depends which way you point the, the back of the balloon along the string, depends which way it will move, either along the string or around and around. So the balloon goes in the opposite direction to the air that's being pushed out the back. 
Okay, now I'd like you to talk to your grown up about what we've looked at today about air. Um, you might re revisit those questions we asked at the start. Have any of your ideas changed? Do you have evidence for that? What's made you change your mind? So have a little chat about that. Now, the extra activities that we have for you this time is to make a sail car. So if you've got a little toy car or one that's even a bit bigger than this, you can make a sail for it. I've used some cardboard and a pop stick and I would stick that on the back and then I would use a straw to blow at the sail to see if I can make the car go along by blowing on the sail. And then you might like to try making an even bigger sail and see if that makes your car go further or faster. So you can make a sail for a car, stick it on and try blowing it. Uh, another activity is to experiment with what things are easy to blow along and what things are hard. So you might try some things like some paper. Uh, you could just have a flat piece and a scrunched up piece. Use it perhaps using a straw. Which one is easier to blow? You might try how easily a leaf will blow. You might try how easily a feather will blow. You might try how easily a plastic cup will blow. You might compare a water bottle that's got water in it and one that's empty. You might try blowing on a toy. You might try blowing on a book and seeing which of these things you can get to move by blowing on them with air and which you can't. And then the last activity is one that you need your grown up to help you with. So if you've got a plate with a candle and like we did the smell test last time, you might put your plate on the, on the bench and stand a half a metre away from it. Get your grown up to light the candle and see if you can blow it out. And then you might step back a bit further and see if you can blow it out. And then you might step back a bit further and see if you can blow it out. And see when you get to the spot where your breath, you can't blow the air enough to blow out the candle. So they're our extra activities this time, all about air and how we use it, what it does for us. So think more about the air that's all around you that we just ignore usually because we can't see it and it's just always there for us. <laughs>